we obviously have to cover the top deck from Salt Lake City this past weekend, right? Like, how, how do we not? Hey everybody, Nick from Nine Card TCG, and today we're going to be covering the list that Drew Cannon took all the way to victory at the most recent Salt Lake City Regionals. It just was on uh, the 20th, I think. I have to look at my calendar, so bear with me. Yeah, on the 20th, uh, which is super, super cool. And it, it happened with two cards that I think people aren't necessarily surprised at, but we'll talk a little bit about as we look at the deck list. For now, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment, all those things tell YouTube this is a good video and other people should watch it. If you're in the market for some TCG accessories, I am now affiliated with Dragon Shield, which means you can use the link in the video description to get yourself some awesome Dragon Shield matte sleeves. They're the only ones I use. You show up to look regionals looking and feeling like a pro, and if you use that link, I get a kickback, which means I'm able to make more and better videos for you guys. Also, if you want to help support the channel in a little bit more direct manner, you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button. You see all the different perks that you get, but of course, there is never any expectation for anyone to become a member. Just you being here watching is enough for me. Now, with all that out of the way, let's head over to PTCGO so we can check out Drew's list. I don't know if I said it before, but if I didn't, huge congratulations to Drew for winning the first regionals here in the US in the past couple of years. I'm sure that... That feeling must have been absolutely phenomenal. So, Drew, tremendous job. I, I doubt you're watching this, but if you are, <laughs> awesome, awesome job. So, this deck focuses, like we said, on two cards. The first one we're going to talk about is, of course, Arceus V-Star. Trinity Nova, three colorless energies, does 200 damage. And then you get to search your deck for three basic energies and attach them to your Pokemon V in any way you like. Now, not only is that a super good attack, but it's also a two prize Pokemon with 280 health, which means it is super beefy and a little hard to take down, honestly. And you're only getting two prizes for all that effort. So really nice to, to have something to kind of combat uh, v stars that help uh, v maxes rather and help keep the game going a little bit longer you're not going to be you know winning in two attacks anymore also uh, it has the star birth ability so we have v star powers which are once per game attacks or abilities and arceus v stars v star power is star birth so to eject for any two cards you want put them into your hand incredible incredible ability and since Arceus V-Star is the only V-Star that we're running in this deck, we don't necessarily have to worry about competing V-Star powers. The other card here is Gengar V and V-Max. And what's interesting about Gengar V is that depending on what you're playing, you can absolutely just use the V and keep the prize trade to a minimum. You don't have to go into the V-Star. Pain Explosion will knock out a Mew V-Max in one hit. Um, Dark Slumber, uh, we don't have single strike energies in this, so you can't one-shot a Meloetta with, with Dark Slumber, but it's not really that big a deal. We do have Gengar VMAX, though Fear and, Fear and Panic is going to be putting in work on those Mew decks. And then also GMAX Swallow Up hits for 250, 280 with a Choice Belt. You can't use it the following turn, but honestly, you're knocking out V-Stars pretty easily with Dark uh, GMAX Swallow Up. So uh, really good attack bolt. Uh, all of the Pokemon in this deck are weak to fighting. So one thing I'm, I wouldn't say I'm surprised at, but now knowing that Gengar is going to be really popular, Arceus is really popular, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Dunsparce thrown into this deck or if you see an uptick in either fighting decks to kind of combat Gengar Arceus. Uh, I'm also surprised again. Oh, I'm not really surprised because at the time, no one, I don't think many people expected this, but now, going forward, you might see uh, that uptick in fighting types. So having your own fighting type, like a Galarian Zapdos or something like that, where you can just go ahead and hit into the mirror. You can knock out those Arceus uh, really easily. You can knock out those Gengars really easily. Our support account, three boss, four Marnie, three research, and then a Raihan just to help get those energies out of the out of the discard in case our opponent knocks out one of our our Pokemon, we can start powering up something pretty easily. In fact, we can go ahead and attack with the Gengar V or V Max, even if it has no energy. If something was knocked out the previous turn, all we need is to get an energy out of the discard with Ryan and then search our deck for, well, an energy or a choice belt or whatever card we're missing to make the play happen, whether it's an air balloon or a switch, so we can get something out of the active and start attack. Ryan's a very, very good card. 
We do have Evolution, Incense, Quick Ball, and Ultra Ball as our Pokemon Search. Switch and uh, Air Balloon for a little bit of mobility. That Big Charm is going to help give you just a little bit of bulkiness where you might need it. Choice Belt to do a little bit more damage. This Double Turbo Energy is not used on Gengar whatsoever. It could be used as a retreat option, but it's really used as an attack option for Arcus. So you can get off that turn one Trinity Charge or turn two Trinity Nova if you're going first. You also have Collapse Stadium here. Collapse Stadium keeps it so that your opponent can't have more than four bench Pokemon, which is a little interesting. Uh, it's not really for the Mew matchup because the Mew matchup, you want them to have as many Pokemon in the play as possible. So you can hit really hard with Fear and Panic. Almost all of the Pokemon are going to be V types, but it, honestly, it doesn't matter. As long as they have three Vs in play and they're going to because they need those Genesects, you're going to be knocking out with uh, Gengar V Max in one hit anyway. We also have Bibro. We didn't really talk about Bibro, but it has the Industrious and Sizes ability, which lets us draw until we have five cards in our hand. Great consistency option. Uh, what else? Tool Scrapper to get rid of opposing choice belts and um, big charms so that we can make sure that we're taking knockouts on things that we need to. And then the, the last thing, oh, I guess that's really it. Well, the last thing that's really interesting is Hyper Potion. Heal 120 damage from one of your Pokemon that has at least two energy attached. If you do heal in this way, discard two energy. Hyper Potion is really interesting because you can use it in such a way that if your Gengar was attacked but not knocked out, you can discard the energies, retreat to the bench, send up an Arcus, and then just power it up again and hit with Trinity Nova. You can also, of course, use the Hyper Potion on your Arceus V-Star and discard a double turbo energy, heal at 120 damage, and then attach another one and start attacking to really add some tankiness and bulkiness to your Arceus V-Star, especially if you do throw that big charm on there. So uh, I am excited to see how this deck plays out. I am a little bit nervous about the fighting types, um, Knowing that Gengar and Arceus are both really good and that at one Salt Lake City, you're bound to see more people playing Gengars and Arceus. So fighting types, definitely something you want to try and avoid. We don't have a Dunsparce to remove the fighting weakness from our Callous Pokemon, but we have to deal with it and Drew dealt with it just fine, well enough to win Salt Lake City. So let's go ahead and see how it goes. Going into game number one, and this is a Rapid Strike, like an actual Rapid Strike deck, I'm going to be real upset. Now, not to say that we can't win, but Rapid Strike's Gale Thrust will knock out um, an Arceus V-Star in one hit. Unless we have a Choice Belt on there. But we do get to have the Arceus and the Double Turbo Energy, which is really nice. We do have a Quick Ball, so we can get a Gengar into play. I'm hoping that... <sighs> of course. As soon as I say we want to avoid Fighting Types, what happens? We get hit with Fighting Types. So this is really not ideal. So we need to get a Gengar out. Um, they can't one-shot a Gengar VMAX with Gale Thrust, but they can do it if they... Oh, well, I think Gengar has 330 health. If they have 330 health, then they would need two quick shootings. If it has 320, one quick shooting and a Gale Thrust will be enough to do it. So let's quick ball away. Uh, probably the, probably the Collapse Stadium, right? And we'll get ourselves a Gengar. This is really not what we want to be playing against. And let's go ahead and Trinity Charge. And we'll just get a bunch of energies attached to our Gengar. Now, I'm not really even going to worry about attaching to the Arceus here because, again, a Galthrust will just KO it. They can easily get a Tower of Waters with Drizzile and a Rapid like Urshifu with the Octillery to come up in Galthrust for one uh, for 300 damage, take the KO. So, problematic for sure. They could also Melanie, and uh, uh, if they discard a Water Energy and hit us with the Melanie, 240 will still be enough to knock out this Arceus because uh, G-Max Rapid will do 240 to the active and then hit the the bench for 120. So they're not going to go with the Melanie option. And they have the Airborne. Yeah, this thing is getting knocked out clean. So naturally, 
what did I just say before? We're going to hit more fighting types. We're, we're just going to because Jolteon's doing pretty well. It's uh, Justin Basil put it at top number uh, in, in spot number five in, the, in his top eight. And yeah, so not not great. Jolteon's weak to fighting and then Gengar Arceus, of course, you are... Oh boy. He's gonna try to dark slumber here. Keep them asleep. They wake up. That's not great. So all they need is a tower of waters. Again, they can get that with Octillery retreat into the Galatross, and then they just win. Or they could just shady deal and tell you to find it instead. And they don't even need. So uh if the, so if they get a tower of waters or a switch or an air balloon. They don't even need to scoop up net. They will just win right away. So, it's going to happen. You're going to hit these decks. Such a shame. Was that the greatest start? No, but those that does happen. Let's try one more game and see if we can get something that is not a fighting deck. That would be fantastic. But... Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, we'll go first this time. It's cool to go first uh, sometimes, I guess, right? We got the double turbo energy. And we got the Gengar VMAX, the Arceus V-Star, so... We're doing okay. We got a couple of bosses. I don't necessarily need those. But I can always Starbirth if I had to. I would not mind... So we're playing an, an Italian VMAX with the Hydro Snipe. Interesting. Not even the Rapid Strike Inteleon. We get a Dark Energy, and we get a Gengar. Beautiful. We're going to attach the Dark Energy and the Big Charm. The reason we're attaching the Dark Energy and not the Double Turbo is because I don't want them to fan of waves my uh, Double Turbo Energy to start the game, because then it puts me a little bit behind. So if I can start the Dark Energy, I will. And then next turn, Double Turbo Energy but not anymore unless this money is kind to me and they can snipe shot hit for 70 damage to the bench so we get our own Marnie. uh let's see we get an ultra ball so that's pretty good we'll dump these two we'll get an arceus v star and then we'll do our own money and then we can make Something happened. I don't want to Marnie. I don't want to Starbirth first until I Marnie. Because if we draw into a double turbo energy, there's no... I don't want to Starbirth for it. And, and we did. So that kind of works. And we'll go VMAX here. We'll scrap her. Away this telescopic sight. We'll drop another Bidoof. And I actually don't think I need to Starbirth right now. I'm not in danger of a KO, and there's nothing I need right this second. So we're just going to go ahead and Trinity Nova for 180. Oh, I could have taken the KO, though. If I tool scrap it away my own Big Charm and Starbirthed... Used Starbirthed? I don't like the way that sounds. If I had used Starbirth and gotten the... Uh, What's it called? The Choice Belt. I would have been able to take the KO on this Inteleon V. So that probably was a misplay on my part. I should have gotten rid of... Should have gotten rid of the Big Charm and then used Starbirth. That inter interesting option. And I do kind of like that the Tool Scrapper is there for... Not necessarily for that reason, but it is a potential play you can make. Um, you just have to be smart enough to do it when it's in front of you and not immediately after. But it's all right. Like I said, I don't think they're going to be able to knock out this Inteleon here. They're going to start attaching to the back Inteleon. They can hit this one for 30 more damage. It's fine. And and I still have my Starbirth. Oh, they're going to hit it for 70 damage. Okay. So, we'll see what we, what we get here. Um, I don't necessarily need an energy, so we are just going to go ahead and Marnie. We get a Choice Belt Collapse Stadium, which I will be playing. We'll see what they, I mean, they have to get rid of a Sobble. They can't get rid of their other Inteleon. Well, Ultra Ball for a B Burrow. And we can draw up to five. I 
Manaphy would be nice too. Just to stop this. This is the second snipe deck in a row we're playing. Um I guess I'll bench this Arceus. I won't just Trinity Nova. Again, I don't really need anything off this Starbirth. I'm not gonna get knocked out. We have another Gengar. Uh, how many double turbo energies do we have still? We still have two, so I'm just going to do the one. This way I can still Starbirth over to another Gengar if I need to. There's another Dark Energy, so that's cool. And an Arceus. So we'll see what happens. We'll, we might be able to throw down another Gengar to attack with, and then we have enough energy for another G-Max Swallow Up. So, or Swallow Hole, whatever it's called. Swallow Up. There's the V-Max. VMAX does what? Hydro Snipe does 40, 60, and then uh, put an energy back into my hand. F fine. They could just go ahead and use Max Bullet now that they have the Melanie. So that'll do 160 plus 60 to the bench. So they're really putting a lot of pressure on this Gengar VMAX, which I don't like. So I want to save this boss for, or this Ultra Ball, so I can boss up like a Sable or something and, and take a KO, but yeah, it's kind of annoying, all the snipe damage. Where's the mana view when you need it? This Italian deck would be in a lot of trouble without it. Oh, they're going for the Bidoof. Um interesting choice I guess they want to take out the Arceus V-Star the Bidoof and then finish off that Gengar V-Max for their uh, other prize so let's see um, Starbirth now I guess is probably the best bet. And we'll get another Arceus V-Star. And a double turbo energy. This way we can get this. This thing can start attacking as well. And... There we go. Hit for 180. We can leave those energies in the deck. That's fine. And then I'll knock this out. And we'll just, uh, we'll boss up something else. We'll see if we can make it happen. Knocking out that Italian, not, or, or I should say, missing the Italian knockout my second turn when I could have Starbirth. That was a big, I mean, we're, we're in trouble because of that. So, yeah. And then they go Melanie, draw a few more cards. Uh, I don't really care about the Path of the Peak so much. Oh boy. This is not good. Since when is Snipe doing stuff? Why is Snipe doing stuff? Uh, I can't give them the Gengar VMAX. So that's, <laughs> that's fun. Uh, so now if they boss it, Hydro Snipe does 160. I have 240, so they can hit 160, 180. Um, so they can't KO this. So 
So I think I take my three prizes. And we'll just go there. That Hyper Potion. <laughs> what a top deck. And then uh, I just boss up one of these clowns and take the KO because they can't knock out, they can't get three prizes this turn. So, and since they're attaching here, they can't attack with the Super Cune, even though that would only do 120, 40, 140, still wouldn't be enough to take the KO. Uh, they can hit 160. So I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty good. We still have we have two boss in hand. We have if they if they do Marnie, then we might have to hope we hit Luminion. And they're gonna boss up what? I don't think they can knock this out. It's gonna hit 160. Yeah. So that's just game. And we hit with that G-Max Swallow up for 250. There we go. Uh, made it a little harder for ourselves than we needed to, but we still take the W. So there you go. A little bit of a shorter video today. Unfortunately, that first match ended a lot quicker. And maybe that second match, I could have made it end a lot quicker if I had that big brain thousand IQ play of discarding my own uh, big charm to Starbirth for a, um, a choice belt and take the KO on that Inteleon would have made things so much easier for myself but here we are either way that's gonna do it for us today thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed found something informative if you did you know subscribe like comment do all the all that fun stuff and uh check out dragon shield you can use the link in the video description to get yourself some awesome products become a youtube member if you're so inclined and once again congratulations to drew for winning the salt lake city regionals super super impressive i understand the hyper potion now especially when i top decked that that was oh boy you, you hate to see it i mean in my case you love to see it but yeah i did enjoy this deck i definitely got a few of the fighting types at this point but something to consider and i'm sure lists will update as we go along but i just wanted to play the exact 60 that drew played and kind of show you what it's all about so that's gonna do it for us today thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it. and i'll see you next time